Hi everyone! Welcome to this week's assembly and welcome back to school. I hope you've really enjoyed being back with your friends and your teachers this week and that it's been a really good start for you. I wonder, on Monday morning, when you woke up and you remembered that you were going to school, what was your reaction? Maybe your reaction was happy to go back to school. Maybe you were excited. Maybe you were a little bit worried, maybe a bit anxious. Maybe you were even sad that you had to leave your parents and your brother and sister and go back into school. All of those reactions are different reactions and it's okay to have all of those reactions. You might have had all of those at some point over the last few weeks. But what about when you are faced with other situations? How would you react? We're going to use the same emotions and we're going to add two more emotions. So feeling shocked or feeling angry. So I have got three questions for you and I would like you to choose which reaction you would have. Are you ready? Question one, your brother breaks your favorite toy and he hides it in the bin so that you can't find it. What is your reaction? Question two, you have a piano exam coming up. How would you react to that situation? And question three, you get blamed for something you didn't do. What is your reaction to that one? We have different reactions to different situations and how we react in a situation could affect what happens next. And today we are continuing our series on hope. And I'm going to tell you a Bible story. And two people in this story don't react how we might expect them to. So let's see what happens. This is a story from Acts and I'm reading it from the International Children's Bible. The story is written by someone who was there at the time. Once, while we were going to the place for prayer, a servant girl met us. She had a special spirit in her and she earned a lot of money for her owners by telling fortunes. This girl followed Paul and us. She said loudly, These men are servant of the Most High God. They are telling you how you can be saved. She kept this up for many days. This bothered Paul, so he turned and he said to the spirit, By the power of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Immediately, the spirit came out. The owners of the servant girl saw this. These men knew that now they could not use her to make money. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the city rulers in the marketplace. Here, they brought Paul and Silas to the Roman rulers and they said, These men are Jews and are making trouble in our city. They are teaching things that are not right for us as Romans to do. The crowd joined the attack against them. The Roman officers tore the clothes off Paul and Silas and had them beaten with rods again and again. Then Paul and Silas were thrown into jail. The jailer was ordered to, to guard them carefully. When he heard this order, he put them down far inside the jail. He pinned down their feet with large blocks of wood. Now I wonder if you were Paul and Silas, how would you react at this moment? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing songs to God. The other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a big earthquake. It was so strong that it shook the foundations of the jail. Then, all the doors of the jail broke open. 
All the prisoners were freed from their chains. The jailer woke up and he saw that the jail doors were open. He thought that the prisoners had already escaped. So he got his sword and he was about to kill himself. But Paul shouted, don't hurt yourself, we're all here. The jailer told someone to bring a light. Then he ran inside. Shaking with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them outside and he said, Men, what must I do to be saved? They said to him, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and all the people in your house. So Paul and Silas told the message of the Lord to the jailer and all the people in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas and washed their wounds. Then he and all his people were baptised immediately. After this, the jailer took Paul and Silas home and he gave them food. He and his family were very happy because they now believed in God. Paul and Silas were in a tricky situation. They were in prison because some people didn't like what they had been doing. And they could have easily reacted by feeling angry or sad or worried or shocked that they were put in prison. But they didn't react like that. Their reaction was to have hope, to trust in God and even to pray and sing whilst they were in prison. Even though they were in prison, Paul and Silas took the decision not to focus on their own situation and how they were feeling, but to put their focus on God and to praise him instead. So whatever situation we are in, God is good. We can put our hope and our trust in him and we can choose not to focus on our situation and our feelings, but we can praise God through the good times and the tricky times. And that is exactly what we're gonna do with our prayers now. Praise you God that you are good. Praise you God that you are always with us. Praise you God that you are faithful. Praise you God that you are amazing. Praise you God that you are loving. Now I wonder if you can think of some things that you would like to say, praise you God that you are. Have a moment to think about a few words that you would like to say, praise you God that you are. We praise you, God, that you are all of these things. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and I will see you all next week. Bye.